Okay, so to explain you quickly, I am in big trouble, I think. I need to escape uh, the Becca Valley. Because the guys uh, I stayed with were, the, were thugs, obviously. And uh, yeah, they basically, they, they cut the, the rack, the rack for the bags. So it's very weak. I need to repair it as soon as possible. I can't ride like that. So I think I'll probably try to, to take the taxi to Beirut. To, because obviously, when they drove me around also. They had a Kalashnikov in the car, so. Obviously they're not kidding. I think I was stupid to, to stay with them. But uh, yeah, they were asking me what, what route I will take. So I'm a bit worried that they wait for me somewhere on the way with their guns to rob me properly because they, they just took a few hundred dollars. That's fine, I don't care. But, uh, but they saw all the cash I have. So they might come back for, uh, for more. So I need to, I need to escape basically as fast as possible. Hello. Hey, bye. Oh, sugar. Yeah, and it was weird this morning also because during breakfast, I think they, sh they did not tell to their mother what, uh, what they did. Uh, but she noticed it because suddenly they were offering me, offering me a lot of food from restaurants and uh, well, more expensive stuff. So, so she noticed it and they started shouting basically, but it was very, very bad argument. So I'm pretty sure. Uh, hello. So I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure she noticed what they did or what they were planning to do. Hello. So I just need to escape. I can't escape with the bike. Sorry. Uh, hello. But the thing is that I can't escape with the bike basically. It's too dangerous. So I have to put the bike in a taxi and whatever the price, so I go to Beirut basically. Have to escape the Beka Valley because uh, someone might be waiting for me. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe they just took the money. But uh, their behavior was very weird this morning. So I pretended I uh, I pretended I uh, I did not uh, notice anything about the money. And then as soon as I could escape, I escaped. Now let's find a taxi, let's go to the center of Baalbek and let's find a taxi to Beirut. Maybe if it costs $100, doesn't matter. I need to get out of this street. So I, I asked the guy if they can uh, fix my rack first. Huh? No problem, okay. So I asked if they can fix my rack. Hopefully they can fix it and I, uh, my plan now is... I talk to camera. Okay. okay. There, eh? Let's go there. <laughs> Should plan there. So I asked the guy if he can fix my rack. Basically my plan is gonna be to to hide the bike in the shop. So while it's being fixed, uh, the bike is hidden so hopefully they don't see me. And hopefully if they're looking for me, when they expected me to turn right to go to Beirut, I turn left. So hopefully it will take some time for them to find out that I did not go where they thought I was going. And then uh, I will ask the shop also to find me a taxi for to Beirut. So hopefully I can stay hidden all the way. Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They don't do aluminium. I'm lucky that the people are very helpful still here. What an insane experience here in the Beka Valley. There? Ah, okay. So basically that's that's what they did if you see they they cut my uh they cut my rug but i was lucky that they, they were not uh 
they were not smart enough to, to cut it somewhere else and in here somehow the rack was still able to to hold the um, to hold the bags so I was lucky I could escape basically because I found out that just when I was loading the bike uh, just before leaving there and uh, I found out and then I got like a big adrenaline shot and, uh, and I understood that uh, that I was in because if it's just like three four hundred dollars that they, they robbed it was no problem but uh, but uh, if they they basically they tried to rob to steal my bike also oh I don't know why but they tried to, to destroy it so then as soon as I saw that I just thought I need to escape as fast as possible okay I hope I can fix that soon and then uh, and then uh, get in a taxi to Beirut because obviously I cannot ride the Beka Valley it's too dangerous for me now I can remove this eh? because yeah 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 no okay. it will be strong Okay, so basically now I need to wait for the um, welding to, to be cold to strengthen it but I told the guy I, I want to go to Beirut by taxi so I'm kind of hiding behind this car there is the streets just behind well my my bike is still visible anyway but uh, yeah I just told him I want to go by taxi and I think he's he's there I think he's waiting to try to see if he can uh, see a taxi but uh, for me I'm just uh, just wait here and Taxi, yeah, yeah. So he's looking for a taxi for me. People are so kind here. Before leaving, I checked. I saw like uh, three hundred dollars were missing, and probably hundred euros, one hundred or one hundred fifty euros in uh, three hundred dollars. Well, it's annoying, but uh, the problem is that's the problem of Lebanon. You have to carry cash, otherwise. Uh, because you can't withdraw with a, with a credit card so well that's the risk of it and I knew the risk I was taking so anyway that's not a I mean it's annoying but th that's not a, a big deal but the big big problem for me was that they obviously they cut the rack of my bike on purpose to, to do something else so I, and that I don't want to find out what what is the something else maybe they just wanna wanna get everything from me by waiting for me on the street somewhere I don't know so in the end, I just uh, ran away. I did not even check if I forgot anything or not. But uh, yeah, hopefully I can find a taxi before they find me. And, um, and hopefully I can get safely to Beirut. Well, I think it's probably gonna be the end of most of my riding in Lebanon. Once I reach Beirut, I think I'll probably maybe visit with, uh, maybe with public transport. To, because my bike is too obvious now. And now they, because if they are the Hezbollah now it's too dangerous for me to ride in the, in the Hezbollah dominated uh, area please. okay I think he, maybe he has found someone I go talk to the guy and see for how much he can ride me drive me to Beirut nice okay Shukran so that's the bike uh, stored in the in the in the in the thing and uh, okay nothing is left okay Yalla Shukran okay <laughs> Let's go! Yalla! Hello, it's Minway, huh? It's Minway. And? France. France? France? Yeah. Juma Pen. Juma Pen Eve. Eve. So let's go to Beirut. Yalla, Beirut. Yalla. Yalla, Beirut. Beirut, what? I don't know. I'll later check phone. Later I tell you. Beirut, Beirut. 
Beirut. Beirut, when in Beirut, okay. Beirut, when I can Beirut. Beirut, Beirut, after basically, okay. Oh my god. A problem, problem. Problem with the wheel, I need to repair. Repair. Sir, sir. No, 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 no way. No, 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 no. Oh, tourist, tourist. Tourist. Yeah, I have a YouTube. All YouTube, huh? Yeah. Can I see YouTube? No, small. No, no, small. Turkey will perish. But you go to the house. But you go to France. أنا روح سافر على فرنسا. You want to go to France? أنا أنا. Yeah. Yeah. أنت أنت. We go together. أنا. فرنسا. فرنسا. أنت أنت. يجي لاجئ سوري. 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 No سوري. No no visa. لا أنا أنا. خيم خيم. Are you you're سوري. سوري. Ah okay. خيم. Ah okay. Ah okay. You we go together to سوري. No Canada no no no. لا مش كندا. أنا أنا. مخيم 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 اوكي هذا هنا يا 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 احنا نشوفه يا 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 سوري <laughs> okay guys so I made it to Beirut so I should be safe here I think because I don't think the well, they did not know, the guys there, they did not know that my bike was folding, so I don't think they knew I could get into a, into a taxi or anything. So I'm in Beirut. Oh my god, I escaped Baalbek. So during the way, uh, I recovered my spirit a little bit. Oh my god. I got really scared at some point. And when I saw, when I saw that they cut my, um, my rack to make that I, uh, that I can't leave their place basically I got really really scared when I saw that so that's, I just then I just packed and rushed away okay so hopefully the repair is, is good enough and um, well I will repack everything go to look for a hotel probably stay a few weeks here in Beirut and, uh, I am with my friend Leman Leman eh? okay <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so Suleiman wanted to talk to the camera, so that's it. He has his chance. He had his chance. And now let's. Uh, wow. I have uh, six kilometers to do across Beirut. Across Beirut to reach a potential hotel. Oh my god, what a day. Okay, I go. Bye. 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 <laughs> I'm still uh, a little bit. Uh, my emotions are still a bit high on the because of the threat I felt suddenly. I really felt in. I really felt in danger basically when I saw them. I felt in immediate danger when I saw them that they 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 made they sabotage my bike basically. They cut my rack. So basically they wanted. I'm sure they want well. I really assumed they wanted to wait for me somewhere on the road, on a small road, to, to get more, more money out of me. Oh, 
Oh, this mosque is amazing. Okay, guys. So now I am. Uh, it's okay. I put my bike. Everything is in the hotel. Everything is safe. Uh, probably gonna stay uh, here at least a week. Well, I, I paid for a week uh, because I have a lot of editing to do. I think I'm gonna stay all the way to to Christmas and uh, and New Year in Beirut because uh, I need some rest. I'm tired. And uh, yeah, the adventures in uh, near Baalbek with the two Hadis who I don't know who, but someone ended up uh, taking money in my bike and uh, cutting uh, the rack of my uh, bicycle. So yeah, I was. Uh, oh my God! Now I feel I feel a little bit more relaxed. Uh, and now I feel safe, finally, in Beirut, away from uh, from those guys. I don't know if they were, uh, I don't, maybe, I don't know. I think they were just thugs, just uh, just small thugs. I don't think they were Hezbollah. I don't know, maybe. But because, I mean, they, they, they seemed, all the families seemed like really genuinely, um, <sighs> genuinely uh, friendly. All the guys around uh, around them, seemed also genuinely friendly. So I really think the guys were friendly, the neighborhood was friendly. It's just the two, the two guys, the, the two Hadi. Uh, I, I will put you the, the image of them. Uh, anyway, so I'm safe here in Beirut. I don't know what to say to finish this, uh, to finish this video. Look at the Sedar, the pride of, of Lebanon. Yeah, I was not lucky. Yeah, basically, uh, in the end, I, I probably crossed the line in terms of safety, in terms of, of traveling, of doing things. Accepting this invitation was probably uh, beyond the... I went beyond the danger zone, and uh, I'm very happy I decided to just take a taxi and head to Beirut and, uh, so that they can't find me. And um, Yeah, I think it was the good decision. I had to... In general, it's like that. When you get to a danger, uh, when you put yourself in den you, yourself in a dangerous situation, you get warnings. And you have, when you have a big warning, you just have to to run away. It's things happen. They, you always have warnings. Things don't happen just like that. So I had a big warning, and I, I, I ran away. Hopefully, it will be enough to to keep me safe here. Anyway, oh my God. I really feel, sorry, I, I really had, I, I was so scared, basically, when I rode from the house of Hadi to the, to the main road, to the, to, until when I stopped, until when I was in the, in the minibus, actually, I was so scared all the time, because I thought, because basically, when, when I left, well, I did not film for obvious reasons, but when I left, uh, Hadi, the guy, the a little bit bald guy, uh, told me, uh, asked me to, where I was going, which road I was taking. So when he, when he, and he asked me that several times, so when he asked me that, and I already knew some money was missing, so I knew they were not nice guys, and he was asking me which road I was taking, then it was basically, that was the trigger to, that was what triggered the huge alarm for me. It was like, for me it was really meaning like, um, like they were after me, basically. They, they, they did not have enough with, with with what they what they took in the in the bags, but uh, they they wanted more because at first also I told him I wanted to go by the small road because I think the small roads are nice to to meet people you see like they invite you for coffee and it's and in the end it's very good for the video and it's and it's very nice it's it's very nice meeting people like that but um, so I think he was hoping I would tell him which way I was going so that maybe they can catch me somewhere else. And the fact that was that, the fact that money was missing, and he asked me which way I was going, and which way I was going to take, and uh, and of course when I, when I went around with them in the car, um, basically uh, at some point, uh, the other Hadi, the Hadi with the long hairs, uh, pulled out a Kalashnikov, an AK-47, and well, I thought they were friendly at that time. So I mean, guns, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> they were not threatening me with the gun, so. But then when you have, you, you match the informations, the guns, the fact that money is missing, my rack is cut, and they ask me where I go, it was like, 
huge danger for me. So, but now I escaped. I think I'm fine. And uh, yeah, I'm safe in Beirut, in a good neighborhood. And uh, yeah, I will stay here. I will not ride much more in Lebanon. I think probably I will. Maybe I will ride the way back from Beirut to Tripoli. Maybe not, because uh, my my bicycle is so easy to identify that. Um, Maybe it's just uh, it's a danger to ride it now. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's what happened. That's what uh, you know when you you bring all the informations together. That's why I felt uh, extremely. I felt that um, I am in a very bad situation this morning. I don't think they were Hezbollah. I don't know. Maybe they were Hezbollah. Maybe just Hadi with the long hairs was Hezbollah. Uh, because the other Hadi actually told me also that uh, he went to the other Hadi. Uh, went to jail also. Well, it does not make him a thief, a thief either, but <laughs> but money was missing. What can I do? It's not my fault his money was missing. Uh, that will be it for this video, guys. So see you, see you for the next adventures. Ciao.